Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'll be moderating tonight and filming the event. Tonight's speaker is Doug Binkley. He's going to be talking about reviews racism, and he's going to be talking a lot about Donald Trump. We apologize for the last minute scrambling of the projector. I did not know the speaker was going to have a PowerPoint tonight, but he does. All right, the format of the College of Conferences consists of the following. The first, be a first, a brief announcements period. Second, there will be, our speaker will speak for as long as he needs to get his point across, up to an hour, maybe an hour and ten minutes. Then we'll have a question and answer session after that. And then after that question and answer session, we will then open up the microphones to your comments, either on or off topic. We all know Trump is like P.T. Barnum, and that he's a crook, according to David K. Johnson, uh, who wrote a book on called the definitive Donald Trump. To tell us more, let's welcome Doug Bigley. <laughs> okay, well, um, I updated the title here a tiny bit because uh, uh, we're not only just opposing Trump, you know, of course, Pence and the other fascists and Republicans are the enablers for the main part, uh, and uh, we have to try and push the Democrats into uh, doing whatever can be done to uh, mitigate the damage caused by uh, uh, by these fascists. So, without, um, I'm going to just explain. Uh, many of you know that um, I write under a pseudonym, um, a pen name, D.H. Uh, Robinson. Um, at times in the last couple of years, I've tried to like say, well, I'll try to get a separation there because you know, what if the fascists take over and the worst happens? There's concentration camps. They round, round up all the usual suspects. You know, like in the movie, uh, I would be a usual suspect. But uh, if I if I had a cover of a pen name, which I already had a pen name, um, I should have got a third, second or third pen name, right? I mean, some people have more than actually my screenwriter. Um, uh, teacher had like four pen names. I s never found out what his actual name was, and so he'd be easier to hide than me. But uh, yes, I would. I try to keep things uh, a little um, uncomplicated. Um, maybe um, now they're less complicated because uh, let's face it. I copyrighted some of the things I'll be talking about under my real name. And, easy enough for anybody to find out. Not Trump, but I mean the people that work for him could find out. You know, they could, you know, hunt me down, you know, or whatever. So, so that's all the done deal. Um, I can't hide anymore. So um, that's my uh, pen name, D.H. Robinson, and um, I'll explain uh, why, um, if there's time, I'm going to have to run through some of these things. And going through my stuff, I uh, discovered some um, interesting uh, pictures. So. The very first part of this talk is, we're just going to kind of buzz through it. Um, let's see if this there works. Go. Okay, there you go. You see me as a snot-nosed 12-year-old uh, at the um, Museum of Science and Industry there. Always had an interest in science. Of course, we know Trump is anti-science. That'd be another reason why I'd be, you know, a suspect to be hunted down. <laughs> but this is me at the inter uh, at the, um, um, the science fair um, down at the University uh, Museum of Science and Industry. I had a thing about submarines then. I almost could have joined the military because I liked submarines so much. But luckily I didn't do that. I would have been, you know, serving on one of them. Um, maybe I would have been discharged for, you know, having too many books like Plato and uh, Beetle Bailey and all that kind of thing. So, <laughs> so I was mad I didn't get first place. The guy who got first place said something with turtles, studying them for a long period of time. I'm, Put in a lot more work than me, but you know I was really pissed off. At the time. So um, this is my first uh, published work in the Lane uh, Tech uh, uh, newsletter or uh, magazine, whatever you call it. Uh, it was a science fiction story about uh, uh, an entity. Uh, it was never clear <laughs> whether it was uh, uh, humans of the far, far future or another uh, alien race, but uh, he manages. Uh, to uh, survive uh, through the cyclic universe, through the next big bang after the universe collapses. That was the talk at the time. I was studying physics uh, um, my senior year. I had a great physics teacher. And uh, so I wrote a story like that. I, I didn't remember I had seen a story like that. It was in the style of Arthur C. Clarke. But it was about um, this guy uh, survived through the uh, big bang, 
collapse for the next big bang, a big collapse, or you know, it could be a white hole or whatever. But um, now they say that that's unlikely to occur. Um, so we're doomed. I mean, you know, this guy was called Nord in my in my uh, science fiction story, but. Um, we're doomed um, to the, the heat of death of the universe that we're in, and it's not supposed to um, contract after all. Well, you've got the story about the expanding, the new um, discoveries. So this goes to show you that science really does uh, progress. They found out that the galaxies were expanding further out as well, um, and, um, and um, we're uh, not in any danger of a collapse. Um, we're in danger of a heat death. Uh, so. Um, I'm talking too long. This is uh, this is uh, um, a uh, uh, cartoon I did at one time. I um, fancy myself a cartoonist. A few were published. This uh, <laughs> since we're talking about liberty and the Statue of Liberty and the destruction of Oslo's uh, at, at the time back in the 70s, um, uh, it was all the thing for a cartoonist to get into uh, Playboy. So. <laughs> I did a lot of racy uh, cartoons, and this is one of them. You can't really read, I guess it's too, it says, she's holding the joy of sex, which was a popular <laughs> book at the time. And that's a phallic symbol there it's instead of the torch. So, <laughs> just thought I'd throw in a few of these things. I, I'd forgotten I did. Um, I had something called tree funnies. Um, I was gonna maybe work that into a strip. Um, but uh, the trees wouldn't move around, so there wasn't a lot you could do. But uh, one of the things I had figured out, which was very forward-looking, was that um, there would be a penalty for treason. <laughs> so you can see this, this one tree must have been guilty of treason. So we can all hope for that something will happen of that nature, right? <laughs> With the uh, treasonous person that we all uh, we won't be named right now um, because they might be arrested. Anyway, um, let's see. I hope these are in the right. Okay, so uh, I also was a member of the Citizens Party. I actually was the second highest officer in the party under Quentin Young, um, which is a name. We won't go into all the details about that, but I did cartoons for the newsletter. This is one about George Dunn. Um, when um, uh, he was kind of anathema, he was so corrupt and everything. Uh, well, he wasn't really that corrupt, but I did this cartoon on that basis. Um, this is a cartoon I did of... Um, Reagan and James Watt, which some might remember, yeah. an interior yeah. secretary, which at the time seemed to be the most corrupt in, in history, maybe worse than Teapot he, he Dome. Now we have corruption on a, such a scale, it's industrial, uh, it's kind of like universal level. I mean, you, <laughs> it's like uh, Jupiter or, or maybe galactic level. I, I don't know what to say, but uh, I, in this case, um, uh, you have, um, you know, they're adding to the acid rain. I mean, you know, oh, well, we, we should be so lucky that would be the only problem we'd have to worry about today, huh? Anyhow, uh, this is a cartoon I did um, uh, when Jimmy Carter was trying to get Jane Burns uh, <laughs> running for president. So that dates it pretty well there, but uh, uh, she was like a southern belle then. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy, I can't give it. Oh, I, I meant to say Captain Butler, I, I'm confusing you. <laughs> This is a, a cartoon of Reagan. Um, he's astride a horse, and uh, this is after the John Lennon assassination. That's uh, the singer, um, Lennon. Uh, and um, so <laughs> he was still anti-gun control, naturally. This is uh, a strip I was trying to get going of Carl Sagan. Um, looks like Carl Sagan, doesn't it? I hope a little bit more. Caricature. This is a drawing I did, um, illustration of uh, dollar sign uh, and pollution and uh, it looks like it's you know some of these it's really incredible looking back uh, 70s and 80s when I did these things and here we are the same problems huh? maybe worse um, I um, worked uh, politically as a volunteer with the Washington campaign I did this never got to the higher ups so uh, Washington on the dollar bill uh, Harold Washington that is we'll have to rip through these um, this is a painting I did which seems a little uh, prescient, uh, in a sense, the idea was that Reagan was the clown, and he might accidentally start a nuclear war. And um, see, there's a push button in the background there. The clown has um, just um, uh, sent off the missiles, you know, and um, cutting his own head off. And I guess the idea is that he's um, going to have his, his head is going to sail around. Um, and so it's, um, 
the um, testament to the stupidity of what he just did. But, um, now we have a clown um, in the Oval Office, um, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people have speculated about terrible things that might happen because he has access to the nuclear codes. And, uh, and now we don't have General Mattis there to uh, babysit um, that situation. So, um, again, a dangerous, uh, you know, we went through a, a terrible period with the Cold War, and um, we don't have um, Russia as that type of enemy anymore, but uh, uh, we, a lot of us were worried that uh, Trump would get us involved in a war with North Korea, and then he just changed his mind about that, suddenly Kim Jong-un is his best friend. Uh, very unpredictable guy, this Trump. Uh, he, was, he looked like he was going to pick a fight with Iran, and then he's going to take the troops out of Syria, which uh, are protecting the Kurds, which are an enemy of Iran. So it's not a very complicated guy, but a very unpredictable uh, guy, um, and very dangerous in the Oval Office. Anyway, um, so um, I was with the Playwright Center for a time. This is an illustration I did for them. I didn't really appreciate it. <laughs> This is the, one of the murals in a play that was produced at the Playwright Center that I did called Hamlet, Prince of Wall Street. That's the cast. Uh, Avenue Theater. This is, uh, you, you heard that Shakespeare quote um, um, that um, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Well, uh, I had a theater thrust upon me. Um, <laughs> It's a long story, but uh, somehow I got stuck with the theater and the lease uh, and um, all of that. So uh, I had to get the theater open. Well, I did. I managed to do it. I uh, managed to pull the staff together. Um, so I'm Lincoln Avenue. And uh, uh, running a theater is pretty bad. Now, the staff really preferred that I be in the background. My, my degree was in physics. I went to IIT. I kind of skipped over that. I majored in physics. I got the BS degree. So that gives me an opportunity to bullshit, and which I certainly do around here. Very few of you can really call me on it. <laughs> but um, uh, at IIT, uh, I was with the Relativity Group, it was called, uh, with Professor Ernst, Malia and Hauser. And um, um, so I studied general relativity, and as soon as they gave me a research project, <laughs> and actually it was an, an extension of research that Ernst was working on, and he gave it to me because it was the most horrible thing anyone could ever imagine. Um, uh, I wasn't a graduate student yet, I was just a, uh, um, a senior. But the, the algebra was just, just too awfully destructive uh, to the human mind. And without uh, computers, they actually did algebra. They didn't do algebra at that time. Now they do that. But uh, unfortunately, for my, my time, um, that was pretty bad. So I never really did go to graduate school. But so here I ended up with this theater, um, which is a long way from physics. but. Um, <laughs> At any rate, um, uh, it was such a, <laughs> a terrible endeavor, but at least I got some of my plays produced. But um, um, uh, we don't really have time to go into that, but uh, I just thought it was funny that it reminded me that uh, it was called the Avenue Theater. It's a very simple name, but I thought if I just change a few letters, it could be called the Albatross. <laughs> the Albatross Theater. And I think, you know, if I had just done that, I wanted to do that. I thought of it, you know, with League of Chicago Theaters, I guess they would have gone along with it. Um, it, it might have drawn a lot of people. What's with this albatross, especially since Monty Python had that thing about albatross, albatross, John Cleese was yelling, albatross, um, don't you have any candy bars? Uh, no, we just have the albatross. <laughs> anyway, um, the albatross, of course, you know, the curse of the albatross. I shot the albatross, and so therefore the, uh, the ship has to sail the seas, and you'd like to run the ancient mirror and all that stuff. And it was the Cursed Theater. I should have called it the Cursed Theater. All right. uh, that's the uh, seating plan. There you go. It's my proof that it... <laughs> uh, I didn't act very much. They wanted to keep me out, out, off the stage as much as possible. <laughs> I've conquered my stage fright now to some extent, but um, at the time I had a terrible stage fright. But this was um, a play by a friend of mine, um, Tom Boyle. He was the son of a congressman, by the way, um, about uh, Chanute. And um, he said, well, you're with physics, you know, you should play my uh, character here. That's Chanute on the uh, left, and I'm on the right. Um, and uh, I was playing Professor Langley. Uh, Chanute was trying to get a glider and, and eventually an airplane to work. Um, and Langley, of course, was this pompous professor of physics who said that, there will never, no one will ever fly. It can't happen. You know? 
know, you will never fly a plane, blah, 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 blah. He was a musical. So he said I was perfect for the role, you know. So at least I was perfect for one role. Um, but um, this is um, part of a play that I uh, directed. These two people were in. That's part of the mailing. Man, those mailings were ter terrible. I mean, you know, and not many people did have any mailings anymore. But we had just so much effort, and uh, so few people showed up. It was very depressing. Um, we were just eligible. Avenue Theater, Avenue Productions is in there. If you look closely, it's a fine print. Trust me. Um, uh, Modern Socrates was a play I wrote. I got a good review from Mary Shen Barnage, who became a friend of mine, uh, also an author. Um, it was about a computer that becomes self, uh, super intelligent and also moral, uh, ethical computer. Now, we don't know for sure, but this, is, this was written um, back in the late 80s and produced at Avenue uh, Theater in 1991. I directed it and I played the computer from the textbook. <laughs> So I didn't really have to learn my line, see? But you can see why they tried, they called me the executive producer. You know what that means. They gave me this, oh, Doug, why don't you, this would be a great title for you, executive producer. You know, behind the scenes, of course. You know, throw me a bone once in a while, a bit part, but, but uh, no questions, no questions. Not till, not till, not till after. Uh, I'm on a roll, just let me go. Um, but. Um, um, executive producer, you know what that means. I just came up with the freaking money, you know? And I didn't have a, I didn't have a daddy to bail me out. You know what I'm referring to? <laughs> Somebody that uh, uh, was on the title page. Um, okay, we, we don't want to get in too much trouble if he does actually take over with emergency powers, right? Okay, well, let's, let's just move on. Hamlet Principles, I mentioned that. Uh, we did do it again at the Avenue Theater, but it was an ill-fated production because one of the actors fell in love with another actress, well, they, with the actress, and they ran away, and uh, it closed, uh, you know, after three weeks. Oh, well, what can you do, huh? That's why I should have called it the Cursed Theater. There's another, there's several other reasons. I mean, if we ever get into that, maybe we'll have, maybe we'll have one of these about uh, uh, playwriting and drama and stuff like that. Murder the Playwright, there was another one I wrote. This was a pretty good ad. Um, actually, we packed the house. That's um, Chrissy Playgood uh, is the character. Uh, Nikki Robb, excuse me, it was based on Nikki Robb. This is Bell Kerman, uh, who be, uh, became a friend of mine because of a play I wrote about the Holocaust. I met her um, in that. And she directed uh, that play in a stage reading. Uh, a lot of Holocaust survivors came to, they loved it. But, she played uh, Prissy Playgood, which was based on Nikki Robbins, uh, who ran the Playwright Center for a good time. And because she uh, was my mentor and thought a lot of me, uh, I took the name of D.H. Robinson in her, on her, uh, to honor her. So she's passed away now, but uh, bless her. And anyway, it was a great play, very funny play. She ran this. Uh, she ran this playhouse with an iron will, and they were all playwrights, and they were all afraid of her, but, you know, they all attacked each other, you know, and the joke was, you know, that they had weapons and everything, and, um, uh, but she was murdered, and I won't give, a, give it away, because maybe we'll, we'll put it on again, and I'll, I'll <laughs> announce it here, and nobody will come to it from here, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Life and Times of Forrest Chump at a Red Orchid Theater, that, um, um, Bill Kermit owned that theater. Um, she didn't run it because it was an artistic director. It led to some friction, but um, we produced The Life and Times of Forrest Trump. It was a parody of Forrest Gump, and what it was was that uh, this Forrest Trump guy was a uh, second cousin, and he happened to be very intelligent. And he was an inventor, and he was creative, and he, he was a musician and a composer. And, um, but he always got the short end of the stick. Nothing ever worked out for him. He was always unlucky. So it's the exact opposite of Forrest Gump. It was pretty funny. I mean, Lawrence Bomber thought it was pretty good. And he gave me um, a very good review, which I'm sure is in the archives of the reader. <laughs> you can probably find it. Um, and um, uh, it was the reverse, of course. I mean, you know, we tend to think that people who are, you know, become successful and are rewarded by society. Oh, just like Trump. You notice how some of these things that I am bringing up in my past have some correlation to uh, what we're going through. But um, Trump was 
uh, seemed to be rich, but he was maybe he mainly just blundered into situations and then got out of them somehow. And uh, and of course, Trump was not, he wasn't really bright, he bought Apple computer because he thought it was a fruit company, that kind of thing. <laughs> Got rich that way. But, uh, I don't know, that's an old movie, it was back in 93 or something like that. Um, this play was produced in 1996. Um, and, uh, that packed the house, uh, standing ovations, blah, blah, blah. You know, well, so what? I mean, what have we done? What have you done for us lately, Binkley? Uh, well, let's move on. Um, well, this is a book signing. Um, the book I wrote, uh, science fiction, paranormal science fiction, uh, X Files was all the uh, was all the uh, uh, big thing at the time, and uh, this was about the 1999 uh, Nostradamus prophecy uh, from this guy will come a great king of terror, you know, blah 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 blah. Everybody was so worried about, I guess, the uh, the so-called. Uh, uh, what, what was that about the two digit the two digit thing? What did they call that? Y2K. Y2K. The Millennium Bug or whatever. So, so I guess my book didn't get enough attention. Oh well, you know. You can see Bob Lichtenberg there. He was one of the kind people to come for this book signing. The, the bookstore had to close shortly after, you know. So I guess the curse is me, right? Not the theater, huh? We can make that connection. The curse must be me. I, I guess you know. Whatever. Anyway, at least the book got into the <laughs> into at least one bookstore, and there it is in the in the window. Hey, my proof. Okay, very nice guy named Pat Butler uh, did an article on me. Thank you, Pat. And you didn't know I was going to mention you, but here you are. Come in. Thank you. Okay, author, author. Yeah. Well, they actually occasionally would they occasionally would say that at the plays. You know, not that often. Oh well. Um, this is the, the, the cover as it was redone. A lot of people said, oh, that cover is lousy. You should replace it. <clears throat> and went through big expense, you know, cut them down, you know, put a new cover on it. It didn't make much difference. <laughs> oh, well, you know, that just goes to show you. Anyway, I, I, I should have got my daddy to bail me out, right? <laughs> okay. Um, but I did have uh, the luck that I um, um, had writing that book because it was paranormal and it dealt with reincarnation in addition to other topics. And um, you don't have to buy the book and read it if you want to find out what happens in it. But um, um, it dealt with the Nostradamus prophecies and, and reincarnation, as I mentioned, and a historian and a magician and a scientist and a few other, you know, subsidiary characters. But I met Gloria Chadwick. She's there with me at the Book Row. Well. Uh, we're both trying to sell our wares. But she also became an agent, and she was able to get my book um, uh, republished in Chinese uh, <laughs> in Taiwan. Um, it was um, um, it got me a thousand dollar advance. Um, there you see. Uh, I guess uh, someone will be able to retranslate that, and you know maybe they'll tell me that it isn't really. <laughs> they'll say it's something funny or something like that. I don't know. I was assuming that um, they translated it correctly, um, but uh, they, I know for a fact that they got the diagram um, three quarters of the way through the book. Um, uh, at least they got the. <laughs> <laughs> At least you got the bodies right, but um, uh, they did kind of embellish the sun a little bit there, the Chinese style. You know, you know, it's just artistic. Somebody did that. Um, it was um, Sphinx and Sense. I think it was the Sphinx Company, and it was um, Sense because you had to have some sense to buy the book. No, I don't know. What that was. No, I do want anyway, dessert, but I'm so thousand bucks. What, no big deal. Spend it for the um, and uh, my friend uh, George Flynn, who came here for a while in the 90s, uh, he's kind of not come here lately, but um, he was kind enough to um, set one of my poems to music, so it is on a CD. It's available through Southport Records, so if anyone wants to order one. I did buy, bring a couple with me, and I brought some copies of the book. But they're in the car. I'll have to go out and run get them to get ready for the, the mass um, uh, run up to the... Get them signed. <laughs> you're all, you're all going to be wanting to buy a copy of the book. Um, now, going on to more about specifically um, um, the current times, um, uh, most of us have seen through, through Trump, I think amongst intellectuals, I mean, he's probably down to 10 or 15 percent. I mean, 
Um, there is, he still has that 35 or 40 percent uh, base, but we're really not sure. I mean, some, they showed articles of some of the people that have been laid off or for, furloughed by the government and they're not going to be able to get, pay for their children's orthodontist or their, chil their children's uh, tuition or pay for food to get on the table even. I mean, and they're starting to weaken a little bit, so there's a little, you know, there have been cracks in the armor. And, um, but this is Yuri Eichen uh, Gallery. Uh, one of the ways people um, show their um, intellectual and moral uh, disgust uh, is sometimes through art. So this is a very fine gallery. It's a small gallery. It's in the Pilsen uh, neighborhood. Um, it's uh, run by uh, Chris Lurie and uh, Kathy Steichen. And uh, they put their name, last names together and they called it the Yuri Eichen Gallery. They could have called it Yuri Steichen, but she left off the S which rather confused me when I tried to figure out what it was. I was looking up Eichen, it's a German word, right? I couldn't find it really, or it didn't make any sense um, what it meant. But it just meant that it was two, two last names. But they're very fine people. They run it by themselves. They're, 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 they've been described in me as saints because um, they're, um, they're, they're doing this. Every month they have something to do with the, the movement, something to do with activists, something to do with activist art art that has a social justice theme, something like that. So they're doing a great service to the community in Chicago, and I hope you patronize and go to the Yuri Icon Gallery when you get a chance to um, have public service announcements on WCPT. And uh, that's the outside. As you can see here that there's a, <laughs> they, they, they were not the first to use the F word. Um, so the Democratic newly elected representative <laughs> who's getting all that heat, um, you know, uh, what the heck, right? <laughs> but here, here, look at that, no wall. This was back in 2017 in an exhibit at the Uri Eichen Gallery. So I'm going to go through these fairly quick. There were some photos at that same exhibit. There's a no, uh, I don't know if I can enlarge this. No, I guess I can't. But you can see the no sign. Now I wore my refuse. I wear my Refuse Fascism t-shirt. I am with Refuse Fascism. I make no apologies about it. Um, it's a very strong group that um, is fighting Trump um, intellectually and morally uh, with nonviolent means. And uh, they have the uh, they have the big they have the big no signs. You know, no means no fascists allowed. No fascists here. We don't want to see them. We don't want to have them here. We want to reverse the curse. We want to get rid of the fascists in this country. And, and worldwide, we'd like to see the, the back of them. What I mean is, is that we want to see people morally persuaded that that's not the right way to go and, and put the fascists in the dustbin of history so we can, you know, just say goodbye. And so that's what the no is. No, there's a no on the back of my... So that's what that refuse fascism is about. Let's go on here. Um, here's a, um, a picture. Uh, you're a mean one, Mr. Trump. Your heart's an empty hole. And I didn't realize until I went back through the pictures I collected that this has relevance to something we'll bring up later. Hopefully we'll have time. I know, I've got to run through this pretty fast here. This is funny because some of you know I've done talks about UFOs. And the person, who, the artist who did this evidently meant a joke that aliens mean Foreigners, immigrants are welcome. That's, but there was a um, um, the alternative um, uh, meaning of, of aliens from outer space. It, it probably meant it as a joke. And sometimes the artists are there, and you can ask, actually ask them what they mean, because um, it's um, um, local, usually local artists that they're uh, presenting it there. Uh, it's usually the second Friday of the month, um, so. Uh, look for that. Um, uh, you can get on to yuri icon.com I think it is. It might be .org, right? I don't know offhand. Uh, this is like a little crypt thing that an artist did. And it says in the notes at the side, um, and I wish I had gotten the person's name, but um, I think it was a, a woman artist. And it was the disgust and the horror of everything that happened, the confusion of everything that happened in the 2016 election, the shock that we all felt. And that artist seems to have captured that in this uh, very colorful, but very disturbing um, uh, piece of art. So I thought that was distinctive. Uh, the Yuri Icon Gallery had a thing about 100 years of hate from 1917 to 2017. 
And uh, part of that was this uh, baby Trump thing. <laughs> now, uh, Kathy Steichen runs the gallery. I actually saw her last night, and she said, uh, fine, that's great. You're going to show some slides of our thing stuff? That's good. Um, but she mentioned that this particular artist that did this had done something in Springfield about um, some kind of a devil statue. I didn't, know, I didn't really uh, catch exactly what that was. I have to look that up. But at any rate, um, uh, some of these artists are not just local. They're branching out. They're doing good, uh, good things elsewhere. This is a kind of a cool thing they had um, at that particular exhibit. Um, the revulsion will not be normalized. The takeoff, of course, on the revolution will not be televised. No. You know, sometimes the revolutions aren't televised, and especially um, when the uh, people um, uh, got in the streets massively in, in Moscow, Yeltsin got on the tank, and three of them were killed, and, you know, because Gorbachev had been kidnapped and been held by the oligarchy, the communist oligarchy. They did overthrow that oligarchy at that time, and that was televised. So, uh, but anyway, what this person's expressing is that you know, we shouldn't pay that much attention to Trump, I guess. We shouldn't, you know, give him that much of, of credit, you know, because, um, and, and it's the media's fault. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, di I'm digressing here, but um, anyway. Um, this is a, a painting, or actually it's a, a wall. Uh, it's more like a sculpture, more like a sculpture. But it reminded me of a painting I did um, back in the 80s, which was also a wall that had, um, tearful and bleeding eyes in it. So it was just an interesting thing. Now, um, most of you don't know Ayala Lizer, but uh, she was a member of Refuse Fascism here. She moved to Albuquerque. Uh, she ran a gallery called Outer Line Art Gallery uh, down in Chicago Avenue. And she did interesting works, a lot of what you might call ready-mades, um, where they, or um, um, kind of art, um, uh, where you just take things that are available and you put them together, um, sculpture of that kind. Um, she did a lot of work of that nature. And this one's kind of an interesting one. I, I thought it was very nice um, um, about this uh, demon-esque kind of creature torturing someone. So we hope that doesn't, we, we know that was happening um, in Iraq. Our forces did it. Uh, we know that happened, things like that happened in Guantanamo. Um, and, um, and um, well, I shudder the thought that uh, it'll be happening on mainland uh, United States. But uh, we want to avoid that at all costs. You know? So, and this one, I, I kind of call this the meat grinder myself. She didn't name a lot of her pieces, but um, she, uh, she is in Albuquerque, and um, she actually uh, had what you might call salons here, where people would get together and they would learn things about uh, Dada-esque art, surrealist art, and those were two of her favorite uh, styles, which she emulated in, to some degree, and in a very, in a very high, at a very high level. And, um, and uh, I believe she's doing some of the same things in Albuquerque. And, you know, she offered me to uh, crash at her house if I could get yes. there. And, uh, <laughs> presumably, I'd have to call first, but, you know. I'd like to go back there, beautiful place. Uh, this, going back to Uri Icon Gallery, um, this was uh, an exhibit to do with Northwest uh, uh, Indiana artists mainly. And um, um, this particular, um, um, this was interesting. These are snake heads, and they look kind of evil. And um, these were by David Stocker, uh, who actually is based in Rockford, but he was affiliated with the people in Northwest Indiana. Here's a couple of hanging judges. They look like they're English judges. And this is um, Defend DACA, which is very important today. It was important then, too. There's another view of those hanging judges, or kind of sinister-looking uh, uh, judges. Uh, and uh, Trump has been replacing the judiciary with his funkies and people that would go his way. Uh, so hopefully, uh, they're not, we're not totally there yet, where he's got that kind of control. Uh, moving along, um, it's part of the Black Snake of Death, which uh, uh, was developed by uh, David Stocker, um, a great activist uh, uh, who lives in Rockford but uh, travels around a lot. He's a singer also, a um, uh, uh, wonderful man, um, and uh, he developed this um, uh, kind of snake uh, 
theater art, um, where uh, the snake would undulate and the, those snake heads would be, um, you know, fascinating to people and some of them would um, gravitate towards the snake and be um, um, influenced and, um, um, and have a kind of an enjoyment of, of seeing that. So I'm getting it, what I'm getting at in this is, um, is the general um, thing of um, uh, resisting Trump and um, uh, having to do everything non-violently that uh, pageantry is the word I'm looking for. Because in the theater, um, one of the great uh, parts, one of the aspects of the theater, which has been mentioned by um, writers of the theater, is the pageantry of it. And that's why they have uh, costumes, uh, beautiful costumes sometimes, and, uh, and the set, you know, like for the opera, you know, they bring the curtain back and you're in awe of how incredibly intricate and how great the set is um, and you, you're blown away by that and then you get the great uh, voices of the of the uh, sopranos and the tenors and the baritones and and, um, and it all it all adds to everything else so uh, we want to try to do that if we possibly can have more pageantry and uh, more interesting things visually and not just we want to fight trump pence and the others with words and we want to have the best words better words than, and than Trump and them have, but uh, we also want to, we want to we want with the visual end, so that, that's the, that, one of the big things about this talk. Okay, a little bit more uh, from Uri Eichen, we'll just have to go through these quickly. Trump with a mushroom cloud kind of breaking him apart. Well, that's a little bit like the painting I made where I, I just had a clown um, uh, setting off World War III. Um, so that, that's why I made that connection. Um, anyway, here's a, a wonderful woman artist at one of the um, um, uh, exhibits there at Yuri Eichen Gallery. Uh, this was about women breaking free of the, their chains. And um, uh, Linda Solitaire um, um, is an activist. Uh, she was more active um, um, about a year ago. She's kind of dropped out a little bit of, um, uh, but um, she's a singer and um, um, a great, um, this person was a great um, master of ceremonies at some of the refused fascism events. And, um, and we're just hoping, we're just hoping, maybe she'll see this video and she'll say, oh, Doug, I'll have to come back now because you said such nice things about me. <laughs> but this was a thing about side, sidewalk art. Um, so uh, there were kids at the public library for this program and we went there. I, I just went on a lark. I mean, she had just mentioned it briefly to me. And, uh, what it was is to get the children to write their own poetry, and it was a very simple form. It wasn't exactly haiku, but it was some, similar to a haiku type of poem. And they wrote their poems on the sidewalk in chalk, and uh, some of them were very deep and moving. About um, and, and, and children at that age have a sense of social justice. I I don't believe it's entirely learned, and I think the psychologists have done experiments with chimpanzees and baboons and, and other animals, and they've discovered that, um, and with humans, at an early age, um, at least humans and primates, have an idea of what justice is. And when something is done in an experiment to show them, uh, well, uh, someone was acting at, like a bully, and the, the children kind of go, you know, they turn away and they don't like that behavior. They're not exactly have been taught already that it's bad behavior, but they, they know instinctively that it is. And if we encourage that and don't overlay it with some horrible white supremacist nonsense or some horrible idea that it's all right because you're rich that you can just lord it over the poor, if we don't encourage the bad and we encourage the good, we have, we have a first step in the right direction. They already are leaning towards social justice when, 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 when they're born, when our children are born. But they do need, everyone needs encouragement. I mean, if you have no encouragement, um, your creativity and your imagination may dry up. So we must encourage and nourish that to flourish in our society. But so this was a, a sidewalk thing. It was just a little thing, but um, kids of a young age uh, getting a chance to show that they could be artistic, they could be imaginative, they could be creative. Okay. And here's a 
cute little thing that an artist did. I, I brought this at one of their few fascist, uh, fascism um, fundraisers. Paid 50 bucks for it, and I almost had to sell it on eBay, but I got through a bad period. My heart goes out to the people that are suffering due to Trump's incredible, uncaring, just destructive nature of wanting to put these people who are working for the government and are doing essential things, essential jobs, protecting us from our food being poisoned. You're all just eating, you know, hoping for the best. I know nobody's really thinking about it, but um, they have gotten to the point where he, one of the people from the FDA was saying, well, we are only uh, going, looking at the most uh, prevalent places where harm could occur, like seafood. You know, we're, looking, we're investigating seafood, but we can't investigate the other things. So things are, balls are going to be dropped that are in the air. Air traffic controllers are, um, somebody's going to make a mistake and a plane is going to crash. Anyway, this guy is a fascist. He's also a completely immoral person. <clears throat> Even a fascist that had a bit of common sense or in, you know, in, intelligence would realize that you can't keep the government closed just because you, you had a tantrum or a tirade. Okay, let's move on. Now, we'll go on to uh, protests and signs of protests. Okay, a board on wanted presidencies. That's a good one. Huh? No one is free when others are oppressed. That's, a, that's you know, that's not necessarily um, an invention of the person that did it, but it's a great thought to be reinforced. Let's make America smart again. That's, yeah, let's make America moral again. Okay, how creative and imaginative is this? This was at the Women's March the day after Trump was installed. Let's not say inaugurated. Let's say the infamous day that he was installed, illegitimate president. Okay, but this was cool. Um, you can see people wrote things like peace and love on the back of a police car. It was um, uh, in the dust of the back window. Very, very funny, very clever, very imaginative and creative. Okay, um, this was um, a little hard to see, but uh, get rid of the poo resident or something like that. <laughs> and also, treason is the reason. It was kind of interesting. I don't think these two people were connected who did these signs, but there you go. And people knew even then, and now, of course, it's come out. This is interesting. I mean, I've been preparing for this talk <laughs> in my mind, but only for the last few days with, this, with these slides. But I've been preparing for this. Um, but back uh, before he was installed, um, I mentioned a number of people. and. Um, that, uh, well, we really ought to start using the, tree, the T word, treason. It, he, really is, he really is treasonous. But they said, well, it's too early. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, this is a person on January uh, 21st of uh, 2017 uh, with a sign uh, mentioning treason. Treason is the reason, of course, that we need to remove the illegitimate president. Okay. Um, somebody did one here uh, where they have the name Trump, and they say, He's a tax evader, a racist, um, unqualified, misogynist pig. Okay, those, those add up to Trump. Okay, very creative. Um, this happened to be um, in the mix of my pictures, but uh, George Flynn, they mentioned him before. Um, he did a work that was based on the Holocaust. Um, it was about um, Polish Jews in the sewers uh, under Rush, Warsaw, and it was called Canal. And it's a very dissonant work in your room, but uh, it shows you that um, he um, uh, was always interested in these um, events in history where people were oppressed, and um, and indeed he was a he was a person that protested the Vietnam War too. So uh, I just threw that in because he's a good friend of mine. So uh, so I went with refused fascism. We have the no signs, we have the no t-shirts, no to fascists, and uh, so they put together a bunch of them in other languages. Nine! <laughs> you know, kind of funny because Hitler was a, a Nazi slash fascist, and uh, so that's uh, 
they had a, so that you can see they have a whole lot of uh, them in different uh, uh, languages, including, you know, uh, uh, languages like Urdu and, um, and uh, the Persian language, uh, Farsi. Uh, sometimes I have a little problem catching the exact word, bear with me. But, um, and of course, we often have signs um, because of immigrants um, with uh, the Spanish um, and uh, English. Um, on, English on one side, Spanish on the other. Okay, so um, the world, of course, is always important in our thoughts. Uh, the environment, uh, right now, the environment is being decimated even more because the EPA, a lot of the workers have been laid off, furloughed, or forced to work. Now, if you're forced to work, and not get paid, isn't that involuntary, involuntary servitude and isn't that um, illegal because of a particular amendment? I think it's the 15th. 13th. 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 Okay. Couldn't look it up. Thank you. 13th is not unlucky, but um, it needs to be enforced at this point. Okay, so. Um, the science march was a wonderful march. Uh, science works, bitches, is what that says. That sign there. Science march was in April of uh, 2017. Um, we do especially that a large contingent. I brought my homemade sign, <laughs> and uh, the refused fascism contingent was so loud, banging on the drums so much, I, I just had to separate myself from them. <laughs> Usually. Usually, I, I'm, I'm completely together with them, so. Um, this is a sign here. Uh, I think I wrote a little note here because you're hard, it's hard to see. But that's a quote from Upton Sinclair. It's uh, the uh, gist of it is that uh, it's very hard to convince somebody of something when keeping their job um, depends on them not believing in it. Yeah. So, we're reaching the point there with some of these government workers that were pro-Trump. And they've been interviewed by some of the media, not the main media, but MSNBC at least. They've been interviewed and they're saying, well, I've got to rethink this Trump thing. Yep. Yep. So there you go. Um, this is, um, again, the uh, Science March, Creativity and Imagination at their, at their finest. Um, everything. Everything brought to you by science. And as a matter of fact, it's true. Everything from the Big Bang on. Jesus. Okay, save the earth. Okay, it looks like you want to go too fast past that. I don't know how to back up. Doesn't matter. Save the earth. Very important. Refusefascism.org marches in defense of science, truth, and the environment. Truth over profit. Thank you. Okay. And um what? Let's see, which one is this? Yeah. You're taking too long, huh? Science, not silence. <laughs> so it's very important that, you know, and scientists, it's hard for them to realize this. They've got to get on board. I tried to explain that with my integral sign. <laughs> integral to understanding the truth, but also uses an integral. Which, for those of you that studied uh, math and uh, calculus uh, class, um, uh, this means that the integral of the Trump function over time, from day one to day 93, which was the day of the science march, was a negative huge effect. <laughs> a negative huge number. Now that negative number, due to having Trump over a period of time, the integral adds up. It's a, it's a way of adding up. It's a limit that gets you the exact number um, based on uh, um, continuum mathematics <laughs> uh, gets you the exact number of the, the effect of any function over time if you can solve the integral. <laughs> and so and what that means is the total effect of Trump from one from day one to day 93 is negative huge. <laughs> and I put a downward arrow there so people didn't know what the negative sign was about. Anyway, but the point is we have now suffered a lot more days. I should have added them up before I came here so I could give you the exact number, but tomorrow will change. Anyway, it's been, it's been a very much larger negative effect. And this says Donald Trump is a weapon oh, of math destruction, <laughs> which he is. You know um, denying climate change, 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 denying the numbers, de denying the uh, effect that the um, increase in the deficit is going to cause.
Right, we can okay, so uh, the apple yeah. didn't fall up. Right. Nothing uh, concerned uh, what happened in the physical world. I'm sorry, I just noticed it. And, uh, this this one lady had a sign, which was that the NRA had a summation of uh, guns and fear. And uh, this guy had a, a pretty cute um, thing here. He had like a, a, a stack of, of turtles. And obviously, that's referring to stupid people Oops. that might believe in a cosmology where there were turtles. You know, we're on the back of a turtle, on the back of another turtle, all the way down, you know, and that's, that's how it is, you know, or flat earthers that believe in Trump. And it was just a dig at them. Okay, so we're two specialists. We had, we had New Year's fundraisers. Uh, Ted Sirota is a good guy. Um, he had, has a site called Degenerate Artists Against Fascism has like almost 2,000 members. And it said, this says, the saxophone kills, this saxophone kills fascists. <laughs> well, that, that doesn't completely go with the non-violent thing, but I mean it figuratively in the, in the realm of ideas, it kills fascists. Okay. So this lady had, uh, at one of the uh, marches in support of immigrants, um, about sanctuary, sanctuary must expand until the earth itself is to be a sanctuary. A good thought? And uh, here we had a thing where we were out um, in front of the river building and um, we were asking people to write down what the, their thoughts about Trump. Somebody said it was bad to be selling out to Russia. And guess what? We're still reading more about it in the New York Times. Huh? And I wrote something there about that, that Trump was uh, this was at the Gene Siskel Center at a uh, um, at a movie about an activist, um, and uh, they had this sign up, which was very nice of them. Uh, Refuse fascism does creative and imaginative things, uh, like having uh, some members uh, dress up as um, characters from The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Again, it's. Uh, uh, it's not just white supremacy, it's also the threat of uh, male supremacy, the threat, threat of women losing their rights, rights that have been fought for for so long at such cost. And uh, this says a cute little sign that says, only you can prevent fascist lies, <laughs> with a picture of Smokey the Bear. Very cute little clever thing. That was at an event we went at Notre Dame to protest Pence being there. And that was not, not a refused fascism sign, that was just a sign by someone in the movement, someone in the resistance, who expressed their thoughts very creatively. Now, a good friend of mine uh, is named Tim, Tim Hickey, and he uh, uh, put together these uh, puppets. It's a very complicated process. He, uh, he went to a class, to it, and he became an expert at it, terrific at it. He's made at least uh, half a dozen of these puppets. They're really great. Trump, Pence, and then um, there was one he called Bannon, and he changed it to white supremacist, and sometimes it's just death. <laughs> because Trump brings death. I mean, there's at least two deaths of immigrants, children dying um, because their parents weren't able to um, apply for asylum the proper way. So they, were, they died in the desert or after being picked up, being in the desert a long time. So Trump, Trump has Trump's killed a lot of people. We can try to add it up. That could be another time. Um, this is a, um, a sign um, which uh, I wrote it down, but uh, it's hard to see. Hold on. Um, uh, repeal and replace Trump. Okay. It's hard, hard to see. Either. Okay. Let's, let's just move on. That was a that was a um, poster in the background there of Trump grabbing the Statue of Liberty's private parts. So that, I thought that related to the one I did about the Statue of Liberty back when I was a cartoonist. And this is uh, Tim's uh, puppet, um, fascist Trump, uh, with Heather Heyer. Uh, so there we go. There's another person uh, who died who could be attributed to uh, Trump's uh, malfeasance, um, at least in a moral sense of uh, inciting uh, white supremacists and, and real Nazis, people who actually call themselves Nazis to um, somebody to ram her with a car. Okay, and there is the puppet again, and going for a road trip. 
and um, <laughs> this was this was down in Calumet City, and um, it turned out uh, a little further after a curve up the road, um, some jerk who really was a Trump supporter ran out there and he tried to pull the puppet out of the, out of the car to destroy it, but he didn't succeed, luckily. <laughs> um, this was at the Holocaust uh, Museum. I took a picture of this. And um, it um, really emphasizes that the fight never ends because um, it was about um, uh, the Holocaust. And um, um, it also mentions the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which uh, we have to talk more about that. I mean, you know, that, was, that came out of um, the UN being formed with the idea that there would be peace, but that there also would be a minimum standard of living, housing, medical care, things like that. Uh, those are the fights we'll, we'll, we'll have alongside of the fight to remove Trump, Pence, and the other Republican um, enablers of fascists. So um, a good friend of mine, Ramon Muniz, uh, I think, I hope I pronounced it right. Um, um, somebody came with the idea and he implemented it. He made this uh, thing with uh, bars that you could take around as a person in a parade or a protest march. And you could dress up as Trump with a mask. And uh, I added the kidnapper-in-chief uh, sign thought that was cute, because they were separating children from their parents. It qualifies as kidnapper, I thought. And actually, um, the people at the Bud Billiken Parade were in 90 degree weather. I had a marsh like it was something like two miles with that mask on. Oh. Oh. I was only able to take it off a few times yeah, in the middle. And um, it wasn't that bad. I mean, when you think of uh, what people are suffering um, in the desert and uh, what people are suffering in detention, um, it was a, a sacrifice well worth making. So, so somebody had to do it. <laughs> okay, here's Ted Sirota again, and uh, this was part of a, a march, and it's just a, a good ambiance of uh, what we what we do. And um, here we have um, another sign, which if I could just read my notes, if I could just find them quickly enough. Uh, uh, where do sex offenders belong? Where do sex offenders belong in jail? Okay. The power of the people is stronger than the people in power. It's a Trump, it's a Trump giant um, puppet balloon kind of, baby Trump, yeah. They did something like that in London too. Trump's the baby. Um, protect people, not guns. This is part of the March for Our Lives. Yeah, this is the fascist uh, puppet again in the Pilsen area. This is a, um, a, um, a fundraiser of an artist doing something about um, race invaders. It's a <laughs> clever little um, thing about um, okay. the, the um, game, uh, the computer game. You know? But uh, that's, that's Trump and other, other symbols they had to do with uh, yeah, well, them. Anyway, the, these are a couple of paintings um, um, that people have done that are anti-Trump. Anti uh, sometimes um, <laughs> uh, store owners or business owners get into the, into the thing. They can put posters in their windows, but this was pretty, pretty clever and very nice to the people that did that. Same thing. It says, uh, people from shithole countries are welcome. Uh, when Trump was calling them shithole countries. <laughs> and, and really, the outrage about a Democratic representative newly elected swearing. The outrage really um, is kind of hypocritical, don't you think? Yeah. So when somebody does something like this, where Trump is uh, <laughs> um, tied to the post, or, or, maybe he's, or maybe he's tied to a stake, S-T-A-K-E, but maybe that's a pun on the fact that you know Trump sold stakes, S-T-E-A-K-E, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> They weren't very good, I understand. No. Okay, so that's the. Is that the end? I guess that is. Yeah. I had a little. I had one. Trump uh, is Christmas. The next thing is we're gonna we're gonna sing a couple of Christmas carols. <laughs> I'm not gonna subject you to all of them, but uh, I'm going to because of the fact that uh, I did. Uh, I and uh, my friend Ted, Tim Hickey wrote these. The same guy that did the puppets. Um, we did these last year. Uh, me, uh, I'm talking about the end of 2017. We did, we did them. Um, they were sung at Daily Plaza. Um, we, 
I did a few more. Um, um, he, okay. Uh, he didn't do any more, but uh, I, I think I finally caught up to him. I maybe have one more than him. <laughs> But um, I'm just going to sing a couple of these because I know we um, uh, will need to get on to the rest of the program. But um, I think uh, even though my voice is terrible, why don't we uh, go ahead and skip that and go right into questions? Well, I kind of think because they one, one, just one, just one, 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 Pick one. <laughs> scary night. Nation in flight. <laughs> Donald Trump is a terrible sight. He the fascist is brutal and wild. Behaves just like a psychotic child. Will <laughs> resist and never cease. Marching for justice and peace. <laughs> Frightful night, despotic delight. Nation in a horrible bright. Non-Republicans doing their worst. Country almost seems to be cursed. March with purpose to th drive them out. That's what this movement's about. <laughs> Throw us a couple more when you do. Throw us a couple I, more when I'm you going do. To your... sing, I'm going to sing a stanza of okay. this other thing I wrote, which some of you know because I've mentioned it. And that is the, uh, the National Anthem needed some updating. So, so I did it because nobody else seemed to have done it. Actually, I spoke to Roy Zimmerman about it. He's a singer that goes around. Um, he actually does anti-Trump stuff. I meant to mention him. I meant to mention a lot of people. We just ran out of time. Um, like the comics, like uh, Stephanie Miller and John Phillips. But I wrote this, I call it the Resistance Anthem. Um, I've sung this before here. Um, and we'll just do the first uh, stanza, and perhaps uh, you'll let me do uh, more of this later. Maybe we'll have another one of these. We'll, we have to respond to events. Things are going to change. I mean, right. we'll, have, we'll talk about that during the question period. Anyway, um, this is a terrible... Um, um, <clears throat> It's a terrible situation we're facing, um, but it's no worse than we've come out of in our, as a nation. Uh, so we can update our national anthem if we wish to the circumstances that we face. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dastardly light those fascists in power, our country they're stealing. It's time for the good people to face up to the fight and get into the streets with great masses teeming. The racism so bare, the scoundrels who don't care can prove none can rest while the danger is there. Oh, say that the flag of resistance must wave as true patriots march our country to save. All right, let's give Doug Brinkley another hand. He did a very creative job tonight. Use your imagination. Power button on the end. All right, Doug, I got first question. My, I'm insulted. You are insulted? Yes, you did not include anything along the Beavis and Butthead uh, things on it. We'll, we'll have to, maybe we'll have to do another one. There's, there's, there's plenty of art imagery in the in the tradition of Mike Judge, such as Beavis, Pence, and Beavis, I, Pence, and uh, Trump Butthead. Trump Butthead. <laughs> if I, you I go, heard of that. In fact, I might have seen snippets of it. So that, if I'd have had time to do more research, that would have been included. But. You would. I think you would. That, that, that those two guys describe the true character of the administration. Yeah, the very true character. Of the administration. You know. 
So now you're going to have to check pick. that out. I hope it's on Netflix. All right, next Just question, I please. No, I'm not on Netflix. Who's next? There's somebody don't, behind. Don't you think the real, the real fascists are the Democrats with uh, Maxine Waters and and and, um, yeah. and Tifa and the rest of them? They're the real fascists. fascists. So I don't know where you get that from, but uh, Maxine Waters just wants to investigate Trump's uh, tax returns and financials to get at if he's done crimes. Do you want people to commit crimes to get away with them? You don't attack the president. What you you have to you have to investigate people that are suspected of crime. That's how our system works. Now you don't investigate people that there's no evidence to begin with. That is also what our system works. But there's ample evidence. There's a New York Times article where they uncovered massive tax fraud by Donald Trump. Now even if you don't think that uh, colluding or conspiring. With, or allowing a foreign power to manipulate an election on your behalf, even if you don't think that just the inaction, knowing that the foreign power is manipulating the election on your behalf is treason, what about the tax evasion? Aren't you paying more taxes because Donald Trump got away with $400, $400 million windfall? We had a Republican senator shot five times, or was he, representative, shot. By, by you uh, fascist Democrats. Are you talking about Scalise? Yeah. 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 Somebody had to shoot so many children they could shot. What, what about Heather Heyer? Yeah, what about Heather Heyer who was run down by one of your Nazi friends? I don't have Nazi friends. Let's, let's yeah, give our, let's let's have, give our the question enough, our time to see. People, your, people that you're making a false equivalence well, with. Yeah, you don't you're making a false yeah, equivalence yeah. of Democrats with Republicans or Nazis with people who just have left leanings and desire a more just society, desire a more equitable distribution of wealth. You're an obstructionist. I'm, I'm an obstructionist, go, go really. Go ahead. Okay, next, please. Uh, Refuse fascism has a plan, and it involves doing something similar to what's been done in other countries. Now, I just threw off that um, the people got it, large numbers in Moscow it's not the back in 1991, and they did actually cause a change in government there. But there have been more recent examples of that happening, one of them in South Korea in 2016, very recently. You can also go back to the Arab Spring, which didn't end so well. Um, the repercussions are still going on, but they did at least remove the dictator Mubarak and other dictators in the region. So massive protests, okay. it requires everyone, even people that uh, haven't been involved so far. If the Mueller report comes out with such obvious and egregious, there's a good word. That's a great word, egregious, egregious. It means large, very large. Okay, don't. Very large wrongdoing. We if the Mueller report comes out with very large wrongdoing, we need everyone in the streets to protest that. Okay. Shorter answers. We only got about seven minutes for questions. All right. Justin Tucker. Justin Tucker. Uh, yes. Uh, has Bob Avaki ever come to uh, organize with you guys uh, with a few batches within Chicago? Uh, to my knowledge, no. I've never met him or seen him in person. But there have been movies that they've presented. Now, every time there's a movie, I try to speak out to the flaws in the movie it, within the group. But I don't want to reveal the exact discussions, but you're welcome to come to any of the screenings if you want to be there and participate in the discussion because they're open to the public. So uh, I don't agree with Bob Avakian. I'm absolutely not of that persuasion. He's farther left than I am. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm a kind of a moderate within the group. And uh, so uh, I'm not going to defend him, but Refuse Fascism is a large group with many members of very disparate opinions. And we welcome people, any people, they can be Democrats, Democrat Socialists, they could even be Republicans, like suppose Richard Painter, who has vilified Trump, he's a Republican, he was formerly a, uh, with a Republican administration, I don't remember off the top of my head which one, uh, it might have, uh, I, I shouldn't say. Um, but we would welcome him to be part of Refuse Fascism because Refusing 
the fascist attempted takeover of this country is what we're about. That's the main thing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, All right. Pat? Yeah, if as many of us uh, hope uh, the investigations are going to show that uh, Trump did indeed uh, commit acts of uh, treason or damn close to it, shouldn't we be very practical and instead put the pressure on both the Republican and the Democratic parties to make sure uh, that Mr. Trump and his minions uh, are removed uh, and uh, sent to prison, uh, but going through the already existing uh, means available, rather than through a group like Resisting Fascism, which is, I think you will admit, a little bit off the beaten path as far as uh, you know, as far as how things are done in this country, ought we not be going through the major parties? And there are Republicans who are as anxious to see okay. uh, that not removed as there are Democrats. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's no What's longer... your question? Yeah. I, I think we got aren't, aren't, you, yeah. aren't you barking up the wrong tree, you know, with Dadaism and that sort of thing, when we ought to be putting pressure on uh, members of Congress and members of the Senate? to get something done. I think the, the purpose of my talk was to go into creative ways that we can enlist the public's help. We, that we can motivate the public. That, but what your point is, which I totally agree with, pressure must be put on everyone. Everyone must do their part. The elected leaders must do their part. Uh, the Democrats and Republicans both. We need, we'll need Republican votes in the Senate to remove these fascists. Now, we may not be able to remove Trump and Pence at the same time, and people debate about whether which is the greater danger. Now we know Trump is the greater danger. I mean, it's pretty obvious he's willing to shut down the government with an incredible amount of harm just because of a tantrum about his so-called wall. So All right. Pence would never have done that. All right, uh, Doug, this, you got the back, this lady wants to... I, I just want to help you. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam, Sam. Yes, hi, how are you? Um, I'm with Refused uh, Fascism, and um, I just wanted to speak to uh, this question because I think the thing of uh, massive nonviolent protest um, that Refused well, Fascism has been talking about is right what you think. It's, yes, we have to have masses out in order to put pressure on okay. whatever uh, Sam, you'll have you a chance, are, you'll have a chance in the later. rebuttal yeah. period. Okay. We'll give, we'll give you a chance. Get it, we're forming a line for speakers at the rebuttal period. So please go ahead and uh, we'll have give you a few minutes. No, no, I, I, I know that, but there's, there's a this is the question period. This is the question. Next, please. The answer is pressure must be put in all, every way we can nonviolently to remove these these. Uh, Dangerous to our republic. All right, there's one over here, Doug. Uh, against the wall, there, please stand up. Okay, go ahead. So, um, I was curious with some of your arguments I saw about Reagan as a clown who might launch the world into nuclear war. A little Is louder, there, please. I'm sorry, what? Louder. Sorry. Is there an element of the man who cried wolf? Because Reagan is looking pretty good from three or four decades later, is he not? Uh, as someone who could negotiate with Gorbachev in the late 80s. Is there a problem here with some of the art, like, well, we rush to call him someone a fascist every single time, and now that we actually have a neo-fascist president, it's not coming through as strongly. Okay, I get your, I get your opinion of the person who cried wolf, uh, <laughs> boy or girl. Um, it's a problem that later people won't believe him. And certainly, when you compare Trump to Nixon or Reagan, Trump is astronomically worse. But that doesn't excuse Nixon's crimes or Reagan's crimes. Okay. Now, Reagan got lucky that he did find out that Gorbachev wasn't as bad as he... he was. Remember, he was vilifying uh, Andropov and uh, the other guy, Kernenko. And, uh, and Reagan changed his tune, but in the early stages of the Reagan administration, when I did that painting, Reagan was, oh, just completely jingoistic, uh, Russia's terrible, Soviet Union's terrible, okay. I mean, it's a, it's a, they're the evil empire, blah, 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 
and he was jingoing things up as if he was going to make okay. the Cold War hot. All right. So I do not apologize at all for that. All right, pain. Doug, we're Thank kind you. of running out of time okay. right now. Okay. Okay. No, Karina's no, already had a question. Well, Karina's got a question. You haven't work. even looked in the back. We'll get to you. You got to oh. you've got to be a chair. You got to stand up. Oh. At the front of the room and look around the room. Why don't you get up there, Charlie? I'm trying to film too. Oh, no, so. you're the chair. All right, now. Uh, who else? Charlie, have you had a question? Yeah. I have I have a question. Charlie has a we'll take, question. We'll take three more. Why? Okay. Um, Donald Trump was elected by having a short, um, uh, real short phrases, um, such as uh, crooked Hillary, lying Ted Cruz, um, low energy job, and would you be better off having one single very sticky term such as treasonous Trump and just have that spread as we're heading into the election season? Uh, well, there's nothing wrong with calling him treasonous Trump, but uh, of course the proof the proof needs to be there because you got people <laughs> that, that refuse to accept it even when um, it's fairly obvious. But uh, what we need to do is not focus on 2020. We need to focus on getting this man out of office before then. We do not want to take the tremendous risk of him starting a war or a Reichstag fire or something uh, taking advantage of a terrorist. The man is, is, if you look at it as him just being crazy, it's understandable. Uh, what he does because he has obsessions but from another standpoint the real terrorists according to all the agencies that know what they're doing are coming in via v visas that they obtain or that they have um, uh, maybe because they have dual citizenship and they're coming in on airplanes the real ter the real terrorist threat is people that come in the terrorists that knock down the towers and attack the Pentagon came here legally okay Muhammad Adam. But are, are you better off with one sticky phrase or something? The answer that is, if Elizabeth, if somebody runs um, and they can can do that kind of thing and pull it off, but the problem is Trump may be a one of a kind to get be able to get away with it. We don't know the answer to that yet. Who else has a question? Let's go, with Charlie. Let's Charlie. Go with yeah, I saw about 50 signs at numerous locations. Uh, the refused fascism activities, but I didn't see even one sign, such as I have in my front window, that said vote Democratic. Didn't you know there was a midterm election? Refused fascism did not want to focus on the election, but some of us, um, many of us uh, within the organization, said yes, you should vote. And, uh, and, I, and I, did I did support the Democratic Party winning um, the uh, winning whatever they could in the, in the midterm. So uh, maybe I'm an outlier. Maybe I'm an outlier. I'm not saying the organization was buying into the idea that there'd be a blue wave. and that They didn't want people to put all their hopes on a blue wave. Okay? So they did absolutely nothing. Well, mo many of them didn't, but I did. I did actually support the Democratic Party. I did, wor I did some work for the Democratic Party. Against, against the rules. There wasn't any rule. When they, there's no rule with refused fascism that you can't work with other groups. Yeah, there's, like there's the libertarians. No, there, there is no rule like that. Uh, Bob? Yes, look, I gave you a good yeah. review. Just a count, little count first. I gave you good reviews, reviews on the radio for both the modern Socrates and Forrest Trump. Uh, they're a very fine place. Very corny, very deep. But, uh, oh, hey, so you're not even related to me. <laughs> um, who's not related? You're not even related to me. It was a joke. Uh, all right. First time I met you back in 91, we were at that play, but okay. Modern Socrates, which is a fine play. But uh, aren't you writing a play now, or did you think of writing a play about Trump? I, tro I, I uh, mused about, I, 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 it was, it was a, uh, uh, what do you call right. it? Well, it was just a will of the wisp. Um, the idea of updating the Modern Socrates play, yes. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that in another occasion here. All right. If I can get, make more progress with it. All right, we're going to stop the questions right now. we got to get into rebuttals. Uh, I'm going to need somebody to help timing tonight. Uh, how many people are wanting to give rebuttals? Please hold your hands up high. One, two, three, four. I refuse.
So far we have eight people. We'll probably go, we'll go four minutes each. Um, is there somebody who can keep time? All right. All right. Uh, let's get right into the rebuttals. Four minutes. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, let's thank our speaker. Let's thank our speaker again. Thank you, Charlie, for the reminder. All right. Okay, uh, well, 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 anyone who knows me knows I take a lot of notes at these lectures, other lectures. I didn't take one single note at this lecture. There's a lot of claptrap, a lot of obstructionism. And uh, anyway, there, there's about 20 million illegal aliens in the United States. I heard 22 the other day, 22 million. And they keep coming in our border, 60,000 a month. Can't you people understand that they're going to ruin our country. Anyway, yeah. uh, I called uh, uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth's office. I called Dick Durbin's office. They don't even have a person on staff. And, and it's a, a weekday, Monday through Friday. You can't even talk to your representatives. Mike Quigley, they had a, a staff person. I talked to her and I said, uh, you Democrats have to stop this obstructionism and we, have these, um, uh, we got to build a wall to protect this country like they're doing in Europe. Yeah. And uh, also, build a wall. <coughs> we have to get immigration le legislation. Like, okay. like a couple of uh, years ago, you were for it, and now you're against it because you're anti-Trump. Anyway, <coughs> uh, <coughs> tr tr Trump wants to build a wall across the southern border to stop illegal immigration. He wants immigration reform to, to stop the lottery and chain migration, chain migration. One person comes in, they could bring, this one murderer, he brought 29 of his relatives in, in murderer New York City, lady. in New York. Yeah, a murderer. And uh, we got to stop lady. these anchor babies, they have a baby here, and they're Americans. We got to stop the sanctuary cities. Anyway, the, uh, the, the Democrats have introduced legislation for the health, education, and welfare of these aliens. Now we got to pay for the health, education, and welfare. This That's will right, cost billions. Don't. They don't work. All across the, the Europe, the people in Europe are protesting the influx of refugees. My, I, I, my father came from all these refugees in Greece, Italy, even in London. They're all over the place. We should have protested. George Soros has been kicked out of his native Hungary. That's his country for his radical agenda. Last week, the United Nations says they want all countries to have no borders. They don't want them to have borders. And we're listening to these United Nations people. Yes. Right. <coughs> Trump says, we don't, Trump says we don't want the, the crime, drugs, and unskilled job displacement and problems of cultural assimilation. These people don't mix with us. Right. And the elite, the ones who, they all like in California, they, they live on the, uh, next to the ocean, and, and, and they have all the, like in LA, they don't live in LA with all the poor, poor people. The, 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 the Democrats want the 20 million refugees for their future votes. Yeah. Trump is concerned about the future of America. We have our own homeless. We should take, we sh shouldn't take, take in the poverty stricken of another country. The United States will still have, will still take in refugees, but they must come in legally. We must build a wall and use the Border Patrol and drones to control our destiny. We can control this. They're waking up in Europe. We're not awake here in the United States. And I, I heard Rush Limbaugh say today, or yesterday, he said, he said, the Democratic Party has written off white men All right. uh, in 2011. They wrote them off. I think you used up your time. They wrote them off. And you people are voting for people who don't support you. Well, I'm with you. Yeah. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is on. Yeah, you're on. You're on. Oh, it seemed to go off. Then I don't think it's on. Yeah. You're on. You're on. You're turn it down. All right, so uh, we heard a lot of complaining today about our illustrious leader. Uh, well, it's not that easy to lead a country. 
Um, and I'm a not a I'm a solution oriented guy. If there's a problem, I'm going to try to find a solution and. If people think there is a solution, then I, if I don't think that works, I'll try to find a better one, uh, not just try to complain about the old one. Uh, so there is a solution, and to, but it's really to a much bigger problem of how our democracy works and how irrational it is. And the solution to that problem is the International Logic Party. Uh -huh. The International Logic Party is not like any political party that you've ever heard of before. Because it's not based on a certain ideology. Uh, the ILP doesn't stand for any specific idea. We are just simply unified by a common value of logic. And the way that that works is instead of an ideology, we have a system. And the system is a more efficient system of democratic organization. And the way that that works is that every person actually puts forward their ideas, their solutions, in their ideological profile. Uh, you, act, you construct your own profile of specific ideas that you support. Based on what ideas are most strongly supported, that creates an index showing what are the dominant ideas within the party. And then according to the most dominant ideas, we nominate political candidates who actually represent what the people want. It's a much more efficient way of doing democracy than what we have right now. In fact, I call it intelligent democracy because it's a much more self-critical system because it really forces every person to really reflect on what they stand for and why. It really forces you to make sense of your ideas and how your ideas fit together with other ideas. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite you to our meetings so you can actually see what a real functional democracy looks like. That starts out with getting one of these flyers. I have quite a bit of them to distribute, but there are some at the back table. These flyers have our meeting times on them. We have several meetings a week, so that democracy is convenient for you. Um, on the back of these flyers, we also have our website. Now, I don't recommend going to our website unless you come to our meeting first. Because if you go to our website, what you're going to find is a lot of information. Don't worry about it. And that information is essentially people from around the world writing a constitution together for the whole planet. Thank you. Every person is putting forward their Thank ideas. Thank you, dear. And that information Thank is you. aggregated into the overall index showing what people really want. Now, you're welcome to look at that. You're going to find out a lot. You can look me up. You can see what I stand for. I'm not going to tell you about that right now. That there is a way you can very quickly find out where I stand on the issues. You're not going to call me left or right. I have ideas that are a mix of both those things. But you're going to find out pretty quickly what I stand for. And as soon as you start engaging in that process, you're going to find out where you stand for. And it's probably going to be a mix of things. It's not going to be a simple left or right, red or blue type thing. Um, but, so, but you're welcome to check that out. It's a good, it's a really, a lot of really interesting information. But to use that, I recommend that you come to our meetings, because that's the best way to absorb this culture. What happens at our meetings is citizens lobbying other citizens for the support of good ideas. Because that's where the power lies in a real democracy, is with the citizens, not with the time's up. elected we need officials. Drones, though. So, okay, your time's um, up. so yeah, feel free to come to our meetings. You'll see how much power your voice really has in an efficient democracy. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Good, good oh, meeting. Oh, 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 you want to take a picture of it? I get them drones up. For saying, I know. I know. All right, let's uh, next. Drones. There's something to be said for speaking briefly. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Doug. It was an interesting talk, especially the last part when you concentrated on what it said in the College of Complexes write-up. Why do we have Donald Trump as president? Why? Sixty-three percent of the white males who voted in the 2016 election voted for Donald Trump. I was one of the 37% may, white males that didn't vote for him. 53% of the white females also voted for Donald Trump. Was gender a factor, a minor factor? 94% of the black females voted for Hillary Clinton. 
why do we have Donald Trump as president? Racism! All right. Next. Where are the drones? Next. Charlie, shut up on the drones. I, um, I've been part of a blog ever since 9-11. You want to speak into the mic, please? Hotel California, because once you get on that block, you can't get off. All right, can you speak but, into the mic, please? Use the mic. Speak into the mic. Okay. I received an email from one of our more literate uh, members the other day who uh, recommended a couple of websites that I wanted to pass on to you. Um, <laughs> Is that that black snake everybody was talking about? Um, the first one is applepiepolitics.blog for or slash dictators dash playbook. If you can remember apple pie politics, it's pretty easy to find it. But um, basically, it's got a excellent um, discussion of the various playbook uh, tactics that are used to take over a country. I'm going to read off. The um, eight of them tonight, but if you want to pursue it, you can go look at the blog. And a lot of this was taken from books uh, uh, on Hitler. Yeah. The first one is the big lie. Uh, in order, in order, the little lies don't work. You have to have a big lie. Um, obviously, the wall is a big lie because we already have a wall. Um, and even the border patrol has come forward and said that they don't need more walls, they need other types of uh, reinforcement. I mean, the drugs that are coming into this country are not coming across the border. They're coming in as submarines, airplanes, and uh, packed in uh, trailers that are going across the border in both directions. And I mean, so it's just absurd because none of these facts come out in any of these talks. The second one is play number two, which is marginalize the political opposition. And um, obviously every other, a speech that we get from Trump is that, oh, the Democrats won't do this, the Democrats won't do that. But you know, he is president of the whole country, and it doesn't matter what party it is. His job is, is to basically uh, make decisions that are going to benefit all of us, regardless of what our political party is. Number three is political violence, and I don't know that we've really gotten there yet. Maybe some of these Nazi dem demonstrations down in the South. I'm not sure. Uh, the, the fourth one is obvious. It's discredit the press. I mean, he's done a great job of that. Anybody that says anything about him at all, oh, it's all made up, blah, blah, blah. The fifth is find a scapegoat. Well, we've got lots of those, don't we? The sixth is blame the foreign boogeyman. You know, you can, you can say it's uh, North Korea, you can say it's Russia, um, who knows, but they're always going to blame somebody. Uh, number seven is let the henchman take the fall. Well, he's already done that, and, and we've worked through a whole chain of the, all the lawyers who are protecting him. And number eight is silence your critics. And I think that's one of the things that we really have to be concerned about, because um, that's next. If, if, uh, if this thing with the wall falls Jan, time's apart, up. Okay. The wall falls apart, you know, you can, you can assume that the people with the black bags are going to come to your door and pick them out in the middle of the night. Thank yeah. you. All right. We got the eight reasons. I'm memorized. Okay, hello, hello. hello. Thank you, Doug, oh, for an interesting talk. Um, in no particular order, I've noticed that uh, starting with Inauguration Day, or whatever else we'd like to think of it as, 2017, a number of refused fascism signs like the one I have at home that was found in the trash, uh, and it doesn't mean anything wrong about the organization, but you obviously give out the signs to people who are not members thereof when you show up to a mass demonstration. So there can be, I won't exactly call it astroturfing, but the signs are there and then you can pass them out to whoever shows up to demonstrate. It's not necessarily grassroots in the classical sense of grassroots. But I don't judge. I kept the sign. It's a good sign to keep. Um, and I don't even hold it against you about the Avakian connection or the Revolutionary Communist Party. I know that coalition politics is a strange creature. Um, and I appreciate that you said you were in refused fascism, but not in some sense in RCP. You're not a Maoist with Avakian. Not with it at all. But you're, but you're in the the larger like, cause 
in there. So, so everyone in the Democratic the nature Party politics. is responsible for oh, anything? Right, yeah, anyone divided. in the Democratic Party says? No, anyone? it's part of the nature of a, a politics as an alliance. So I, I appreciate that this is part of the paradox of what we deal with in life. I know this too, uh, working with the local political party go, myself. Uh, and anyway, uh, I would beware very much the... Oh, okay. The mysteries of uh, what Mr. Putin is doing. I appreciated that you talked about treason, but the old Soviet connection. It is a former KGB agent who just, uh, you know, administered some of this mischief to the United States uh, through Mr. Trump, and that is something worth remembering also. But Doug, I, uh, Mr. Putin, I appreciate this. You know that. Uh, you talked about treason, but I would have liked to hear the word Putin more, seen some Putin posters in your presentation. Uh, because that guy is not going away, and he's a real-life James Bond villain, as he was once described on uh, uh, the comedy show Key and Peel. Uh, anyway, George, some of the stuff you said caught my attention. Um, you mentioned some innuendo about George Soros. Give me a favor, now, don't use this. I'm a libertarian. I'm not a huge George so Soros so fan, but the reason Hungary is opposed to him is because he's broadly speaking in favor of constitutional democracy. You, he's Jewish, and the new regime Thank in you. Hungary is increasingly anti-Semitic. Okay. I think it would be unfair to We're say that Hungary is doing the uh, the Orban regime in Hungary is doing this for honest or noble reasons to Mr. Soros trying to shut down his pro-democratic universities and that kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, 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 well, and when it comes to immigration in the United States, we didn't restrict white immigration until the 1920s, so all this belly aching about low-skill immigration now, when that used to be standard, you know, at the time most of my ancestors came here, uh, you know, they were not indigenous to North America the white people of Europe, but they were allowed to come here unrestricted until 1924. So that's worth remembering, too. They restricted the Greeks and the Italians and the, and the Eastern Europeans. One Starting in the 20s. Time. And uh, I will quote from a piece of artwork I made but did not bring with me today uh, on a poster for the uh, protest last year, the Women's March, if I can read this bloody small type. It's hard. I know. I'm getting older. This is from a 1926 book by Suzanne La Follette, distant cousin of the old Senator Robert La Follette from the Progressive Party and Progressive Republican. But she was a uh, proto-libertarian, for lack of a better term. I know of no stronger argument for the social philosophy of the anarchist, for there is no more striking proof of the incapacity of human beings to be their brother's keepers than man's failure through sheer levity over thousands of years to govern to, to govern woman either for his good or her own. Okay, your it's time's up. It's a little up. bit of a mouthful. I know my time's up. I'm it's sorry. Very good, you. though. Very good. And I'm very sorry, good. Doug. I see you all the time. Thank you. Yeah. Any sense? No, I'm waiting. Next. Um, in terms of the, um, I, I'm going to be eclectic as they say, um, there was something with a Holocaust Museum which um, I really objected to their naming Henry Kissinger Man of the Year a few years ago. Um, and the second thing is there was, a, I'm sorry that you missed a sign in the, in the uh, parade that said um, um, Two-thirds of Trump's wives were immigrants, which means, which certainly gives uh, credence to the thought that w immigrants will do jobs that Americans aren't willing to. <laughs> <laughs> and the, second, the, second, the other thing about immigrants is that, you know, if, if the person that, that, that would, the, 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 what, what you said, you can practically repeat verbatim from the 1800s, from speeches given in the 1800s, about how we were being overrun with people whose cultures were different than ours. And we restricted all kinds of people from the Japanese and the Chinese and Asians yes. and yes. Uh, people, uh, those, those dark people, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, Jews and people who were not Christian, Catholics, the Irish were considered uh, uh, below the below the standard 
and uh, Trump's own ancestors, his, grand his grandparents, were illiterate, uh, low-skilled workers who came here and, and uh, according to his criteria, would have been denied entrance. So, you know, the whole, the, that whole anti-immigrant thing really is racism, and it really is... They're um, illegal. I don't care what you're talking about. It's, it's, the thing is, is that anti-immigration, because people are anti-legal immigration, too. Because the people who are coming to the border are seeking legal asylum under national and international law. It is legal to seek asylum in this country. Yeah, Even if you cross the border <coughs> illegally, if you turn yourself in and say, I am seeking asylum, that is a legal act, and you are here legally. So all of this bullshit is political bullshit. Thank you. Thank you. And next. Well, this uh, discussion that we're having here tonight is an old story. In the 1840s, uh, when some of my relatives were coming off the boat, and in the certainly in the 1860s, when more of my relatives were coming off the boat, uh, there was the question of, well, you know those Irish, they'll never fit in. Then came the Civil War, and all of a sudden, Patty was very much in demand. <laughs> they needed people to do the fighting because a lot of the better classes of society did not want to run the risk of getting shot. And so they let Patty do the work. Many of them became officers, as did some of my relatives. Because when we came here and they were recruiting right off the dock, you can be sure that my forebears asked, what do I have to do to get promotion? And so they did. And so they worked their tail off. And this has been the truth of just about every group that has come here. Uh, you know, we, we have to start judging people not on the color of their skin or their origin, but on what they can offer, what they can do, what are their talents, <coughs> what, is, what are the things that they bring to us that we desperately need. We become awful short-sighted when we make this strictly a case of uh, immigrants all being, uh, you know, the same. Not true. What we also have to remember is that this president is not only his own worst enemy because of the, his steadfast refusal to read the morning briefings which tell him what's going on, and so he does all kinds of stupid things, and uh, guess who suffers for it? We, the American public, of all colors, of, of, of all races, whatever, because the man is not doing his job. Truth of the matter is, truth of the matter is, if he were working in one of his own corporations and he were taking two hour, three hour lunch breaks, he'd be fired, now wouldn't he? Yes, yes he would. If he were taking unauthorized yes, vacations to go play golf for a week or two, he'd be fired. Yes. Now, we have to recognize the fact that this man needs to be fired. No. We have yes. elections. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we yeah. don't need to do it with, you know, exotic paintings or anything like that. We have the ballot box. We need to organize people and, and teach them the importance of going to the polls and voting and making themselves felt. You know, there are some people who think that they're too pure to engage in elective politics. Well, elective politics is where it happens here in this country. And may it always be so, because that's the way people are heard in a nonviolent way, in an effective way. And, you know, 
the next time the next time I hear somebody say, "Oh, I don't I don't vote in elections because you know they're all corrupt." Well, who the hell makes them corrupt? The people who stand by and let the bad guys run the show. Yeah. yeah. You know, 200 years ago, okay. Uh, <laughs> an Irishman up. in the British Parliament said, "All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing." Your time's up. My time is up, and that's about all I would have to say. Thank good you. men do Woo! nothing. I'm one of the 37% of European American males who did not vote for Trump. Woohoo! Open borders. All right, all right. Uh, excuse me. Open borders aren't all that bad. Because so I can get from Illinois to Indiana without having to show my passport, and it's much convenient. Now, refusing fascism is a noble cause, no doubt about that. So is refusing other forms of totalitarianism like socialism, communism, and theocracy. And it's for this reason I cannot join refuse fascism in opposing Trump, because I do not want to associate with authoritarians like the Revolutionary Communist Party who have created refuse fascism, refuse fascism as a front for their own organization. This is not a conspiracy. This is out in the open. The RPC website has an article called "Why We Have Taken Up the Fight to Build Refuse Fascism and Drive Out the Trump Fascist Regime," a statement from the Revolutionary Communist Party USA. So let me read off to you a few hot takes from the Constitution of the New Socialist Republic in North America, written by Bob Avakian, founder of the Revolutionary Communist Party and Refuse Fascism. So for those who don't know, can know. Quote, I read that. The legislature may pass a law instituting a draft of able-bodied female and male citizens and residents of the, new of the New Socialist Republic in North America who are of the appropriate adult ages, but in these circumstances as well, priority on reliance will be placed on recruiting volunteers. So Bob Avakian is okay with drafting people. At the same time, they are under the overall and ultimate leadership of the Revolutionary Communist Party. The Army Militia and other organs of public defense and security are accountable to the Constitution of the New Socialist Republic in North America. And blah, blah, blah. So basically, it sounds like one party rule. They're writing their party into their own constitution. That sounds pretty fascistic to me. <laughs> um, the responsibility for the enforcement of the laws and the defense of the Constitution uh, resides in the Executive Council with the overall and ultimate leadership of the Revolutionary Communist Party. The Executive Council is responsible for establishing, providing necessary funds and resources, blah, blah, blah. Bob Avakian uh, can't even come to his own rallies, and he wants his inner uh, cadre to be the rulers of this North American socialist regime. Uh, going on, all education and public education provided for, provided for financially through allocation of funds for the central government and other levels of government under the direction of the executive council of the central government. So the, the people who started Refuse Fascism want top-down rule and want to control the education system, no public, uh, excuse me, no private education, no homeschool, no nothing. All education shall be public education according to this. In line with the socialist orientation principles regarding the development of the economy, and which orientation principle, blah, 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 the ownership and use of the major media in the new socialist republic of North America shall be in the hands of the government and is under and its ultimate direction, and specifically that of the executive council of the central government. No free speech or freedom of the press in Bob Avakian refuse fascism America. Members of the Supreme Court are nominated uh, by the Executive Council of the Central Government. These nominations are subject to, subject to review and approval by the Revolutionary Communist Party. All right. One party rule in Bob Avakian refused fascism in America. The economy of the new Socialist Republic in North America is a planned socialist economy under the direction of the state led by the Revolutionary Communist Party. Cool. You got a bunch of uh, cadre folk high up. Top down, planning your economy. I'm not going to be done with okay, this. Means of production and, and other private capital and wealth. Your time is up. All right, All right fuck really this organization. Uh, yeah. Fascism yeah. sucks, but uh, fuckers are fascists. I'll get you a gift. Look on me. Uh, good evening. 
Uh, I'm David Travis. I want to say that uh, this, our speaker tonight uh, was primarily anti-Trump rhetoric. He didn't say one single thing that was good about Donald Trump. Uh, the fact is that many... Uh, hello. The fact is that uh, Donald Trump, I happen to think, is a very good president. And I'm for Donald Trump. Uh, and at the same time, hello, at the same time, I disagree with him about the war. Uh, but you would never know what our speaker said tonight because it was very much in a class with Captain Kangaroo. It was all mumbling, and you couldn't understand very much what he said. Thank you, and good night. I heard everything, and I'm in the back. Charlie, Next, so, Jonathan, four minutes. Yeah, well, please, just, uh, 330 million people, how many got a job? We all know too many who want to call their whole life off. Is there another way you have the global rich put a checkmate on God? We can tell you stories that shock your soul about what behind the curtain goes on. 330 million people, how many gotta stop? We all know too many who gotta walk till their feet rot. Now a new day, or is it hopeless? Does it all end in a draw? It's about time for a general strike. Let's hear our voices call. 330 million people, imagine what could unlock. We all know so many who for years have been out the box. Everything sold to the highest bidder, and the truth's not told on Fox. They can send us cash in the mail if they expect us to ever watch. 330 million people, who do you think you're kidding top? We all know you need us, to to forget we're being robbed. Get on a plane and learn how they in other lands love to mock. We see is a beast, last second victory, but we know she'll make the shot. 330 million people, what time it is in just the night. We all know so many who Miss President says a lot. Miracles defy explanation, and this one's truly odd. Like when you open your fragile heart and soul to find love just about to knock. 330 million people don't trust the good or bad cop. We all know somebody who has fallen for that con. Every day somebody's just walking and out of nowhere flies a squad. Was there ever a purpose for it? Their silence says a lot. 7.5 billion people, a place of grace beyond. We all know a way that soon to reach this distant pond. When I was four months, the thinnest shield stood to absorb the cheapest <coughs> shots. I would live to be its witness and the ink and page keep on. Uh, just for clarification, the most cited and read living author in the world is a democratic socialist, not a totalitarian communist. His name is Noam Chomsky. Uh, thank you for a great presentation, and uh, I hope I wasn't too off key. <laughs> Next. Next. After what I heard here tonight, I would just say, I would vote Donald Trump just out of spite. I say, go fascism. Whoa. All right, you didn't get any. All right, all right. Next. I, I think that Donald Trump is a genius. I think Donald Trump is a genius. He is brilliant. A lot of people I hear him talking all the time about what an idiot he is. And they scare the crap out of me because Donald Trump is a freaking genius. Just with his mouth, that salesman put himself 
into the most powerful position in the world. He's, he's brilliant. He is a brilliant salesman. Doesn't mean he's moral. Doesn't mean he gives a flying crap about anybody but himself. But he's a genius. And all this talk about him being a dummy, you're missing the point. He says these, he doesn't say stuff because he wants to, his goal isn't to sound smart. His goal is to just stay in power and get what he wants. That's it. And he'll say something smart or say something stupid to do that. And if he can get everybody pissed off, if he can get everybody in this room pissed off so they're all talking about Trump, he'll do it. You know, and people talking about how dumb he is really discounts uh, his power and the, and the possibility that he can be smart enough to pull this off again in 2020 and then we're doing the whole same shebang all over him. What a nightmare. So don't take this, don't take this guy lightly. I mean, he says dumb stuff and he's doing it on purpose because he's freaking, he's a smart guy. It's all sales. And there is somebody here who said that uh, basically if you don't vote, you're, you're doing nothing and you're part of the problem. Well, it's not, that's, that's kind of not really the truth. I don't look at it that way. See, there are some people who say, you know, you can vote for Trump or against Trump. But some people say, well, or you could vote for people who need help, like the middle class or the lower class, or you can vote against them. So, you know, in one case, you're, you have to vote Hillary because that's anti-Trump. But what happens if you want to vote for the middle class? Who's not Hillary? That's supporting Bernie Sanders. That's what I did. And I'm hoping to hell he runs again. I mean, the poor guy, he's, I, I'm not sure he's really up to it or up to serving four or eight years, but I sure as heck hope because he really, it's, he gets so much motivation and all he does is talk. And none of it is sales talk. He's appealing to people's heart and, they, and, their, and their common sense and the people who have a sense of social values. And so, um, you know, I'm not really sure exactly what the answer is, but I would su humbly suggest to people is don't get riled up by Donald Trump because you're just feeding into the media frenzy. Look at what he's doing, stay calm, and support goals and support uh, um, policies and people who support policies that support the middle class. Thanks. Yeah. Don't get excited. Okay. Except everything Trump does. All right. Tonight we turn to hardcore Trumpists. And I would say the following to them. My criticism is not so much for every last person in this country who voted for Donald Trump, but it is for the members of their so-called Trump base. These people are responsible for virtually everything that's gone wrong with this country since President Kennedy was killed. And wasn't Oswald one of them? Despite the fact that he was sick and twisted, my answer is these people, in a sense, are, in a spiritual sense, are Oswald's grandchildren. And as far as I am concerned, they are trying to do to freedom and democracy in this country what Oswald did to President Kennedy. All right, all right, Charlie, four minutes. All right, I just want to give. I didn't give a. Although I'm not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for next week's program. Sid Cohen, who actually now, I believe, has the status of the oldest member of the College of Complexes, going back almost to its beginning. But he's going to be talking about the nature of the state, its origin and purpose. And one thing about Sid is every time he speaks, I usually catch at least one phrase or thought that I take home with me. So I highly recommend coming next week. And let's thank Doug for a nice yeah. PowerPoint. Really, I, I didn't know you were that active getting around town. All those photos. I'll be very brief. I won't even take it, but uh, uh, I've been to some refused fascism. By the way, I'm the only guy who's wearing the shirt correctly. He's got his uh, backwards. <laughs> I want him to go to the website. <laughs> But I was not, I was not hypnotized, uh, though they knew my ideological differences and positions as something of a traditional political. I even was indicted 
to an exclusive meeting uh, meet from their, even their representatives from out of town were there. Uh, the, and I, I think in opposition to this tragedy that the nation is going through uh, in Washington, we can put aside our ideologies, whether they be uh, this on the right or left, and stand in opposition to the, the disintegration of our nation and its values. Uh, and, and this ca catering to the worst uh, angels of our nature. Um, but the other thing in defense of this group, uh, they, I'm sorry sir, I went to one of their meetings and rather than listen to the presentation, they had a literature display and I got their, their, their the, the, the question was, are, they call for a revolution. And the issue is, well, what do you do after a revolution comes? And I read the Constitution hypothetical. I didn't have any problems with it. There's many versions of that floating around. But anyhow, I, I found it kind of interesting. I even remarked, you know, had I not been able to read it for free, I might even have purchased it. But it's a hypothetical thing. What happens to the United States? And what was his, his, his suggested ideas for improving the Constitution and government? Anyhow, thank you again very much. All right, next. Get up there. And where are those drones when we need them? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Speaker gets the last word. Yeah. Here's your schedule. Speaker there. gets the last word. Thank you, Charlie. I never got so much praise from you. I'm, I'm glad the tape is still running, right? It is. Okay. We got that on tape. Um, in, in response to this idea that um, refused fascism is a front that is fronted by uh, this RCP. RCP is a smaller group and they would not be able to control um, not or not. they would not be able to control or to fashion because their numbers aren't anywhere near what it would take. So uh, yes, Bob Vinkin has these ideas. He calls himself a communist. He's probably more like a uh, uh, Far left socialist, but using the word communist is kind of a bone to get pick about that. It's kind of stupid. But um, um, he's not in any danger of taking over refuse fascism, even if they have a fantasy that, um, that they created this group and um, that's going to do their bidding. Uh, as I said, uh, there are a wide range of opinions uh, uh, within the group, and if it were to, to grow larger, that would only be from the general public, which is what I hope happens, which is what I've been striving to have happen. Um, so uh, there's an argument to be said that whatever words you use, we need a drastic change in our society. The pendulum has gone so far over for these uh, rich oligarchs who have so much control. And I go to... Um, uh, to AOC, I think it's Alexandria um, Costa Cortez, something like that. Ocasio Cortez. Ocasio Cortez, thank you very much. Uh, she says, uh, well, what about raising the income rates, income tax rates on those very rich people to 70%? You know, that goes back to about the 60s or 70s. Uh, probably, probably in the mid 70s or something like that. Well, was that so bad? I mean, really? Um, the, uh, uh, the the country was prosperous in the 50s when the rates were 91%. Yeah. Now, you'd have to manage all that correctly, and you'd probably um, have to be, you know, very careful what you did. But I mean, look, every responsible industrial nation, um, Sweden, your Germany, your England, your Canada, um, and, and many other countries, uh, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, they handle their healthcare system much better than ours, and we could at least start with a Medicare for all. I mean, 
Bob Avakian is for Medicare for All. Most of the people in refused fascism are for Medicare for All. We're not focused on that right now because that's a heavy lift that couldn't be done with the Republicans in control and able to block things in, in Congress. It couldn't be done unless the filibuster rule was removed and, uh, and Democrats could pass things with a simple majority. That's all thing, those are all things in the future. Uh, as Charlie pointed out, we're, we're faced with a, a tragic circumstance. We're faced with a um, tremendous challenge um, because of the danger of this country going to a, a, a dictatorship of the right, which would be a hell of a lot worse in these circumstances than a dictatorship of the left, which is not in the cards anyway. Okay. Okay. Gavin now, us out. You know, I, I got to wrap this up. I, I'm, I spent so much time responding to that, darn it. Um, but um, uh, I'm going to take a look at the International Logic Party. I've heard it mentioned a few times. Uh, I'm going to uh, um, check out a few of the things I made notes about here. I'm glad that uh, Pat Butler spoke up for immigrants. And a few other people spoke up for some things. Uh, I can't deal with with, uh, with everybody, but. Um, let's uh, let's have a, a unity on, the, on behalf of getting rid of this drastic uh, danger um, that we face, and uh, and uh, we we don't want to wait until 2020. That's those are the two major points that I think. Uh, and my talk was not related to all all these political considerations. It was more in this talking about the imagination and creativity of people in the resistance and that uh, we need more of that to gain more people to the cause. That's what, that's what the main part of my uh, talk was about. Okay, do us a favor, gavel us out and dismiss us. All right, we're done. <laughs> All right. <laughs>